Okay, just coming back in from a very excellent nighttime workout once again. Totally unexpected. Uh, last, I took the day off yesterday and the night before, if you remember the last video, uh, part seven or whatever it was, um, I had turned my ankle and ended up running five and a half miles on it anyways, and the foot felt great and everything. Though it, um, and I didn't, my mistake and uh, what I learned was I, from not soaking it, I should have done it, though it's just more of a matter of wanting to do it, and I didn't end up doing it, so the next day it felt a little bit sore, not as far as putting pressure on it, because it was on the, it was an outside turn, on the outside of the ankle, and it just uh, felt sore to the touch, so I took the day off, kind of had a lazy day, and it was actually somewhat sore still this morning, not like, you know, to where I couldn't walk or I just didn't know if I'd be able to run or run effectively. I did a, about a 20 something, 20 to 25 minutes soak, went out and ran, and it made all the difference. I could still notice a little bit of something, but it, it the difference between uh, soaking it and not soaking it would have been a huge difference. And I actually ended up running a little over four and a half miles, and this makes a big difference too. Uh, because it was night, because it's late again, and I didn't want to take a chance of uh, stepping on something um, as far as a tree root like what happened last time, I just ran on the concrete. But that's four and a half miles on the concrete, and if you've uh, kept up with what I do, I almost never, I, I, I definitely never recommend running on concrete, though it's something I need to do as far as getting acclimated and transitioning to running on the track, which I almost ended up doing today, but I got going again late today, which was fine because I ended up doing a workout and it was one of the better workouts that I've done actually. And four and a half miles on the concrete is by far <clears throat> the most I've ran on concrete. I usually have run like anything around like two and a half to, or two to three and a half miles on the concrete at the most. And so that was good. And there's, there's advantages to that also. Um, though I wasn't used to it, I'm as light as I am and as bouncy as I am and light on my feet. I'm really, it, it's really easy in, in certain ways as far as feeling really springy and each step, you know, being so much easier compared to running on dirt. Dirt has its advantages as well as far as the lower impact. And that's what I'd recommend for anyone who, especially if you're a little bit overweight or even, of course, more than that, if you're heavy, if you're gonna start running, don't be running on concrete. It's just gonna be weight, and even if you run correctly, it's gonna be way too much impact through your body. And the impact quickly gets up to your knees. And that's the main thing you wanna be concerned about as far as you know, taking care of your body when it comes to running and uh, not hurting yourself. The knees are the number one thing to, to, to think about. And then of course your back and your, your hips as well but the impact has to go a lot longer way through and it's gonna most likely take more of a pounding on the knees. So I ended up wearing my, my street shoes, did the four and a half miles, felt really good. I was actually not intending on doing that much and especially since it was concrete. So I was really proud of that. I was about to walk back in and, and come back in here, but I ended up thinking, oh, I'm gonna you know, walk, about a, walk another lap around, which is a mile or so and get some, uh, take in some nice fresh air because I was in like all day yesterday so I wanted to get some nice fresh air even though when you do the cart you know the longer distance cardiovascular type runs you do get a lot of um, extra air you know oxygen oxygenating the body you know taking in you know when you run your body has to adapt to being it needs to be able to take in more oxygen the blood needs to so your body you know through the course of a long run starts figuring out a way to do that and you know um, so the extra little bit of uh, jogging or walking what you might do at the end of a workout instead of going right back indoors it's good to just you know take a little bit of a walk take nice deep breaths controlled you know only like say a few breaths per minute you know take nice and deep hold it into the lungs really absorb and take in all that you can and your blood's going to, and since you just got done with the run, your blood's going to be trying to take in and, and um, take in more of that oxygen. So more advantages that way, the more oxygen you have in your body, the better, you know, this is why long distance runners and uh, bikers will actually dope their blood with oxygen as far as 
pre-race is so they'll be able to perform a lot better you know the true nutrition is through the you know the in comes in ways that we don't see as far as you know the subtle invisible forms of things that we act the body actually needs and that the cells of the body actually thrive on you don't need to eat food before or while especially during any sort of like long distance uh, you know race or anything okay I'm, this video is going on um, plenty long so I'm sorry about that I just wanted to, to talk about that oh but to finish up what I ended up doing instead of um, walking the whole way around I walked most of the way around and I got to the hill where I ran where I run and um, I didn't do I didn't wasn't intending on doing hills today at all because of how my ankle you know felt as far as being a tiny bit sore but by that time and though I and though it was still slightly noticeable but I just ran four and a half miles so it obviously wasn't affecting me that much I, I went to the hill and ended up doing six repetitions up full the full distance to all the way to as far as it could go you know to the intersection that reaches at the top of the hill up way after it flattens out so the the furthest I could possibly go and it's six hills total this is after the run uh, reps number three and five were at close to a sprint and for that closer to full distance as well so and as far as feeling you know out of breath or anything I felt great while doing these and especially after I felt literally on top of the world once again feeling invincible looking forward to the next workouts getting more and more progress and really seeing what we could do and what you know if I wasn't able to soak my feet I don't know what I could, if I would have been able to do much of this at all I think this makes a gigantic difference. It's making all the difference for me as far as my feet. And that, you know, that's the first thing, that's the first thing that requires any kind of action as far as, you know, um, running and everything. And it really does, I think, you know, as far as the ankles and the, ten, you know, the, the tendons and muscles and ligaments that are all around the ankle area, it helps with that. But I think what it helps even more with is the the nerve you know the nerves and this is what I noticed the first time after the first soap that I did that it was uh, um, because I had very very severe nerve damage in my left foot it took care of that so much and that is a huge thing with being able to you know run quickly and and as far as striking the ground we don't um, think about what the, how the nervous system plays into all this there are so many nerve endings in the feet and upon contact being able to respond quickly and and do and perform the functions that the foot needs to in order to quickly uh, respond and get off the ground as far as striking the ground and I'll go into more of the formula about how speed works and everything another time but let's get into some uh, let's drink some here and I had some already this was just about a little over twice this amount I swished and gargled with them and then had a little bit of a little bit more just to get going let's uh gonna have a little bit we did uh 50 milliliters the last two or three times I think so let's get a little bit more because today's feeling pretty good and I got about the right amount of fresh in there to make the amounts work and everything sweet Oops, there we go okay that's 80 so around 80 to 90 so that's fine for now some water and as you can see i'm not dead yet aren't i am i nope just going fine and now I like a remember I don't recommend this to, to anyone to do of course you'd have to actually age some for a long period of time like I did like this is over 10 months old now it's very strong and so you'd actually have to do all of that you know as far as aging and I think if you were do if you were to do that you'd probably already been practicing urine therapy this is I'm only doing this because I've practiced urine therapy I've drank 
hundreds of gallons of, of urine in the past three years, used it on my skin, drank it, you know, drank it as urine, drank through the nose. I, I've done it all, like literally a thousand, um, over 1,100 plus days straight, you know, of doing, of practicing this. So I am, have a lot more adaptability, you know, to this. I'm not saying that somebody who's never done this, it would, act, it would do anything bad for them. But we don't know that for sure. So, this is just an experienced uh, person who has a lot of uh, time doing stuff like this, being able to do this. So, I do not recommend anyone else trying this. But if you are an experienced urine therapist, I just want to say that drinking AIDS urine is not going to cause any problems. Quite the opposite, actually. Alright, that's that. We got 11 minutes coming up here. Don't want to take too long. Thanks for watching.